So we will be using Nearpod. Leave your conference tab open and you can open up a new tab in your browser. Type in join.nearpod.com and enter the code. The code is ZJCGV. And Cash will type that into the chat box on the side. Our objectives this morning are to identify the scope of the Quality Matters rubric and apply the QM rubric to review an online or a blended course. Um, so I took a, it was about a 15 to 20 hour training this summer on Quality Matters. And I took some of what I learned to put into this presentation. This is by no means official, it's just an unofficial um, quick little condensation uh, condensed down into 40 minutes. So there are eight general standards we're going to look at today. Under those eight general standards, there are 42 specific review standards. There's no way we would fit all those in today. So we're just going to look at the main um, eight. We have the course overview and introduction, learning objectives, assessment and measurement, instructional materials, learning activities and learner interaction, course technology, learner support, accessibility and usability is the last one. So the first activity in Nearpon, we're going to ask you about your glows and grows. Which area are you successful in that you feel like you are doing a good job in remote learning? And which area do you feel like you would need to work on more? So you'll hop over to Nearpod. Yes, so please be sure you have Nearpod open in a tab, and please be sure that you also have Hopin open in a tab so you still have audio in chat. If you're having any issues in Nearpod, please send me a message in the Hopin chat, and I'm also keeping an eye on Google Hangouts in the background. We have about a minute and a half. We have uh, 30 seconds remaining still, but it looks like everybody has submitted in your pod. Um, would anybody like to share their, their answer? Um, completely optional. If you would like to share your answer, please type in the chat and I can share it in your pod.
Okay, and I'm not seeing that anybody would like to share that. That's totally fine. We'll keep it anonymous. Um, if you do change your mind, I can always go back and share later. All right, Drina. Thank you. Okay, so QM reviews. The reviewers assume the learner's point of view. So they go into a, an online class or you could use it for a blended class if you have a like a Google Classroom set up for your face-to-face -face class. But right now we are with this pandemic, we're all pretty much online. Um, so the reviewers go in as a student and they look at so many different aspects of a class and that helps it um, make it easier for your students to use. And so there's no confusion, um, especially for brand new students. So by going in as a student and assuming the learner's point of view, it reveals aspects of the course that could be improved to make the navigation easier and improve the learning environment. We do look at standards um, that are met at 85% and not 100%. So there is a little bit of wiggle room. You don't have to have absolutely everything in there. Um, and we strive for continuous improvement, not perfection. When designing a class, so you're working on your own class, you wanna use the acronym WHEN. O stands for organizing. You wanna organize the what's, the when's, the why's, the how's. N, navigating. E expectations. Uh, also, it's best practice for quality course design would be to have clear, consistent language used in all areas so that it is easy to connect the learning activities, assessments, and instructional materials to the objectives. So now let's take a look at the general standards overview. We're going to go a little deeper and kind of explain which what each of the eight standards are and go give you a little bit more information. So we'll start with the first one, course overview and introduction. The overall design of the course is made clear to the learner at the beginning of the course. The course overview and introduction set the tone for the course, lets learners know what to expect and provide other guidance to help learners succeed from the outset. General standard two, the learning objectives or competencies. Um, they describe what learners will be able to do upon completion of the course. The learning objectives or competencies establish a foundation upon which the rest of the course is based. And I, I feel like a course would have to have objectives, otherwise you don't know what you're teaching. So you have a class, you know what the students need to know by the end. Those are your objectives. General standard three, assessment and measurement. Assessment is implemented in a manner that corresponds to the course learning objectives and not only allows the instructor a broad perspective on the learner's mastery of content, but also allows learners to track their learning progress throughout. So especially for our GED students, we have, um, they have to pass the GED test, but that's not the only assessment that they're taking. They're also taking TABE tests. And within your own class, you should be offering um, assessments, whether it's an exit question or a weekly quiz or something that lets the students know that they're on track and they're mastering the content along the way. General standard four, instructional materials. Instructional materials enable learners to achieve stated learning objectives or competencies. The focus of this standard is on supporting the course objectives and competencies rather than on qualitative judgments about the instructional materials. Instructional materials may include, but is not limited to, textbooks, open educational resources like EdReady, publisher or instructor created materials, slide presentations and interactive content such as simulations, 
experts, lectures, videos, images, diagrams, and websites. So it's all the materials that you use to teach. General Standard 5, the learning activities and learner interaction. Learning, learner activities facilitate and support learner interaction and engagement. Course components that promote active learning contribute to the learning process and to learner persistence. Learning activities should be varied in order to provide reinforcement and mastery in multiple ways. Um, and so activities could include class discussions, simulation exercises, practice quizzes, tests, case studies, role playing, practice presentations or labs. And the difference between the learning activities and the instructional materials is that the materials are just materials, they're, they're textbooks, but the learning activities is what the students are doing with that material. So the, it looks at two different angles um, to see how they're working together and how they are um, helping the student achieve their objectives. General Standard 6, the course technology. Course technology support learner achievement of the course objectives or competencies. The course technologies enable, the technologies enabling the various tools used in the course facilitate rather than impede the learning process. Some examples of tools are included but not limited to discussion boards, chat rooms, grade books, social media, games, whiteboards, wikis, blogs, virtual classrooms, web conferencing, announcements, assignments, quiz tools, plagiarism de detection tools, video repositories, online proctoring tools, and collaboration tools. And so we don't want to use a tool just for the sake of using it, it also, it has to have a purpose so that it is facilitating or being used in the learning process. General standard seven, the learner support. The course facilitates learner access to institutional support services essential to learner success. It is important to ensure online learners know they have access to and are encouraged to use the services that support learners at the institution. So having an area in your class that gives students links to um, any kind of services that are available to them. Maybe it's the library access or tutoring or a link to testing so that they can um, get information where they need to go to take their GED test, um, but not just the, um, the support services on campus, but maybe it's a link to transportation services or childcare services. So full circle support services for our students. General standard eight, accessibility and usability. Um, I will be going to a website here in a second. So if you want to come back to, if you're still looking at Nearpod, if you'll go back to the hop in tab, and I'm gonna be showing a website in just a moment. Um, let's talk about it. Yes, and if, if you have any issues going back to the hop in tab from Nearpod, please type in the chat and I will do my best to assist you. Thank you. So the course design reflects a commitment to accessibility and usability for all learners. The course design utilizes the principles of universal design for learning and reflects a commitment to accessibility, ensuring all learners can access all course content and activities and to usability, ensuring all learners can easily navigate and interact with course components. So the website is udlguidelines.cast.org. 
and they have this chart here and it looks at the whys of learning, the what of learning, and the hows of learning. And some of these things you probably do without realizing that you're actually being um, universal for everyone. Um, some things like clarifying vocabulary and symbols or clarifying syntax and structure or promoting understanding across languages. Those things we may not even think about, but we are doing for our students, um, which is excellent. But there are some things that we don't think about unless that problem arises in our own classrooms. So we want to have, we want to be ahead of the game and have this access already there for all of our students. Um, a good example of something they we, that we might not think about until we have it is offer alternatives for visual information. You might think that that would only be for visually impaired students. However, with this pandemic, everybody has been moved to an online setting. And so bandwidth is being eaten up in neighborhoods. Um, neighborhoods, unless you're on fiber optics, neighborhoods share bandwidth. And if your bandwidth is low enough, pictures, like in a presentation or on a document, pictures might not load if the bandwidth is too low. So if you don't have, if you have a picture that is necessary for the learning process, maybe it's a picture of a skeleton and it's labeled out and detailed out, um, and it's necessary for the learning process, and they can't get that image to load, they're missing out on an important piece of learning. So you have to offer alternatives for that visual information, whether that's um, offering a description on the side or adding um, maybe a link to another page or there are you can add in an alt tag and i didn't i didn't talk about that yesterday but an alt tag it's actually really easy to add let me see if i can pull up I'll, I probably don't have time, but if you right click in a Google document, it doesn't show it in a Google document, on a Google slide on my presentation. So I could do a right click on a picture and it gives you this alt text. You can click on that and it will give you a title. And what this does is if a student uses a screen reader and you give it a title and a description, then they can see, they can open up that screen reader in the tools and they can read the description of what that picture was if they can't get it to load. And it's super easy. I just right clicked on the image and hit alt text and then I can type in anything I want there. That's amazing, Drina. I didn't realize slides can do that. Thank you for sharing. Yes. All right. So I'm not going to go over everything in this chart, um, but it is there available for you to look at. And you can click on each title and it'll give you more information about it. And Drina, you, you can't see that. I don't think you can see the chat, but Kylie said that's new to her too. So, and she also says. Yeah, it was new to me. And that was one of the things that they offered in that training I took. So, um, I've been using it. And I don't know that students even know that it's there, but um, it's there. So. Um, and it's just it's just one of those things. So um, let's move on to the alignment standards overview. These are a couple of the specific review standards. I chose these because they are the alignment piece. So they're all interconnected. And so let's look at what that is. 
when aligned, assessments, instructional materials, learning activities, and course technologies support the learning objectives or competencies. The concept of alignment is intended to convey the idea that critical course components work together to ensure that learners achieve the desired learning outcomes. Measurable course and module level learning objectives form the basis of alignment in a course. So the course learning objectives or the course com competencies describe outcomes that are measurable. Measurable course learning objectives precisely and clearly describe what learners will learn and be able to do if they, if they successfully complete the course. Course objectives describe desired learner mastery using terms that are specific and observable enough to be measured by the instructor. And so by measurable, what we mean is an action verb. So here we have a Bloom's taxonomy verb wheel. In the middle, we have the tiers of Bloom's taxonomy. We have remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And then branching out in the sections after that are the action verbs. Um, so in the understanding section, students can explain, express, illustrate, interpret, paraphrase. And those are the that's the language that you want to use in your objectives that is something that is measurable and then the outer ring it has um, activities um, so you could see a, a demonstration graph presentation project role play show and tell etc and so that's what they mean by measurable and then after the course objectives is the module objectives. The module learning objectives or competencies describe outcomes that are measurable and consistent with the course level objectives or competencies. Learning objectives or competencies at the module level align with and are more specific than the course objectives. And so here's an example of that. Our course level objective states, um, upon completion of this course, learners will be able to apply the rules of punctuation. And then the module objectives support that, and they're more specific. Learners will write sentences that correctly use commas, semicolons, and periods. Number two, learners will use apostrophes when and only when needed. Number three, learners will use double and single quotation marks correctly in quoted material. So you can see how those three module objectives, so maybe that's what you're doing for the week, is going to support that course objective of what you want them to do with punctuation by the end. And so now it's your turn. I'm going to show um, some objectives. My So I picked a class that I've taught before, and we're just going to focus on one objective. Now, if you were reviewing a class, you would look at all of the objectives and see how they all go together. But for the sake of time, we're going to look at just one course objective. We're going to go with the first one, convert standard and metric measurements. And we're going to we're going to look at the same objectives throughout um, the rest of the presentation. So convert standard and metric measurements is the course objective. And then our module objectives for that is going to be convert between units of length, weight or mass, and capacity. Um, for example, feet to yards or meters to centimeters. And then solve application problems involving units of length, weight, and capacity. So now what I want you to do with that information is you decide as a reviewer, you're going to decide, are those objectives measurable? Could you measure that? So go to your Nearpod tab and there will be a poll and it will ask you if you met or not, or if we met or not met the standard. That poll is live in Nearpod with a two-minute timer. 
If you have any issues navigating between tabs, please let me know in the chat or Google Hang. If you did join us late, you can still join us in Nearpod. So join.nearpod.com with the code ZJCGB. So you can still join us late if you would like. Thirty seconds remaining in the poll. We have submissions for everyone, and it looks like the majority think that this is met, but we do have um, at least one person who thinks it is not met. So, Drina, mm -hmm. was it met or not met? Ew. So, it's actually subjective, and there can be reviewers that do decide not met. Um, and so if you were to do an official review, you would have three people on the team um, looking at, the, uh, at an online course and the majority rules. So if two out of three decides that it is met, then it is met. Um, so for our simulation today, then it would be considered met. Yes. Awesome. And it is by the 85% standard and not 100%. Gotcha. Yeah. OK. Um, so moving on to assessment, the assessments measure the achievement of the stated learning objectives. From the types of assessments chosen, it is clear that learners can successfully complete the assessments if they have met the objectives or competencies stated in the course materials and learning activities. So I'm going to go to one of my quizzes for that standard, um, for that week one. Was so that... please be sure you're in the hop-in tab so you can see Drina's screen. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at a week one quiz, which would go with the module um, objectives that we just looked at. Convert between units of length, weight, and capacity, and to solve the application problems. And we're going to decide if this quiz is aligned to those objectives by at least 85%. So I'm gonna read out the questions and then we'll go back to Nearpod. How many yards are in 81 inches? How many inches are in nine feet? How many inches are in two feet, eight inches? Tiffany has two feet of red, fabric and 16 feet of blue fabric. How many yards of fabric does she have all together? How many ounces in 64 pounds? If you start with two tons of dirt and take away 1,520 pounds of dirt, how much does the remaining dirt weigh? How many cups are there in 2.5 gallons? How many pints are there in four quarts and three pints? Which of the following statements are true? Select all that apply. And the statements are such like the gram is a unit of mass in the metric system, the foot is a unit of length in the metric system, and they have to pick which ones are true. And then the last question is convert one decameter to millimeters. So in Nearpod, now you can go back to Nearpod, and there's going to be another poll. 
did that quiz align to the objectives by 85%? poll is live in Drina, we have a request. Can you show the objectives on your screen again, please? There's the module objectives and the course objective was to convert standard and metric measurement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One minute remaining. Fifteen seconds remaining. Okay, and that is our time. So here are the results. So we had two people who said met, uh, one person who said not met, and then one person who didn't answer. So I believe that would be um, two out of three that think this is met, um, which does mean it would meet the standard, correct, Drina? Yes. All right. So it, it this one would be considered. Awesome, okay. Um, and again, if you are actually reviewing a course, you would look at all the tests and not just one. So you would look at, are the tests um, varied and sequenced? Um, do they go in a logical order? And the reviewers would also have a subject matter expert. Um, so you're not having, if it's a math class, you're not having all English majors look at the class. There would be at least one math person assigned to that um, course review. If there isn't one available, um, then the, the leader, the re lead reviewer could ask the instructor for um, information on that. Um, so it's a very, it's a very give and take. It's, it's, it's a very thorough process. Um, yes. Drina, we have a question from Bill uh, about the quiz that you just showed us. Yes. What would be considered a passing grade on the quiz? Would it be 80% or, or what would it be? Um, for my classes, I would say 70%. 70%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now let's move on to instructional materials. The instructional materials contribute to the achievement of the stated learning objective or competencies. The materials align with the learning objectives or competencies in order to provide the information and resources learners need to achieve the stated learning objectives. And then on the other side of the coin, we have the learning activities. The learning activities promote the achievement of the stated learning objectives. Learning activities incorporate interaction, which promotes learner achievement of the stated objectives by actively engaging the learner with the course content. Learning activities are varied in order to provide reinforcement and mastery in multiple ways. 
And I believe we're running short on time. So we're gonna skip that next poll. I would have shown you um, all of the assignments from week one. And then you would have decided if they met um, the standard for aligning to the course objectives. But to save on time, we're gonna skip that. Um, if you are interested, you can email me and I'll give you access to my course. Um, course technology, the tools used in the course support the learning objectives or competencies. So there's clear information and instructions are provided regarding how the tools support the learning objectives. For example, a course that requires posting to a discussion forum makes it clear how the discussions support a learning objective. Tools are not used simply for their own sake. So if you have tools, you need to make it clear as to why they're using it. And students ask us all the time, why do we have to do this? Well, if you have it, already have it set up that it tells them um, why they're doing this, then they don't have to ask. Um, and then also, it's best to have information and instructions on how to use it. So tutorial videos, are um, excellent to make and we there are screen sharing options cash what is the one the state um, just recently purchased a uh, screencast-o-matic yes. and it's it's really fabulous in terms of accessibility because it does real-time closed captioning and it's it's actually accurate like it it doesn't do weird phonetic spelling it, it captures it pretty well so it's it's great and it's available through your delta yeah um so that if you do need more information on that i'm sure cash would be willing to help you out are there any other questions okay and then if i can just go through the last couple of um slides from the moderator's side so if you could um Click one more, Drina. Um, let's see, so workplace, myworkplace.com, you can log in with your Delta account. Um, I think most of you are already there. If you can click one more, please, Drina. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Let's mm -hmm. see, we also sent out the professional development survey to the state. Tina's emailed that twice. We would love to hear your input. We have about 75 um, responses, which is really wonderful. We're doing coaching for adult education again next month, which is really great. I'm very excited about that. And then, Drina, if you can click on to the last slide, this is a link to fill out our professional development survey. And if you go back to your Nearpod, um, that will take a live, take you to a live tab. Um, let's see. So we have a request for our emails in the chat. So my email is cclifton4 at nmdelt.org. So that's in the chat now. And then you're drina.com. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And I put it back on, on my screen. Awesome. Thank you. And so both of our emails are in the chat there. Yes. Okay. And if, if you want more information um, about Quality Matters, I just barely touched the tip of the iceberg on it there's so much more to that like i said i had a 15 to 20 hour um, training that we just covered in 40 minutes but qualitymatters.org is the website <clears throat> if you want a copy <clears throat> excuse me if you want a copy of this presentation so you have these links you can email me and i'll send it to you and we have a a link to the emergency remote instruction checklist <clears throat> And it has just a, a very quick checklist that you could use, utilize for your classes. Um, and I, I, I am a certified quality matters reviewer. So if you're interested in that really deep process, yeah. um, feel free to reach out to me and I can get you more information about how to actually certify your classes. All right, thank you. All right, um, well, let's jump back to the stage. So we'll see everybody at the stage. Thank you so much for attending. Um, Bill, I don't think quality matters is the topic in workplace, but maybe it should be. I'll see you all on the stage. <laughs>